What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to dynamically access and change object attributes during runtime in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so there are four functions in Python that allow us to dynamically access and change attributes of objects during runtime. But before we talk about those, let's first of all talk about what we try to accomplish here in the first place. Now, let's say we have a simple class, let's call it person, and let's give it a simple constructor that takes the parameters name and h. Now we say self.name equals name and self.h equals h. What we can do now, obviously, is we can just print, or first of all, we have to create a person object, p equals person, Mike, 30 years old. And then, of course, we can print p.name and we can print p.h. And when I run this, you can see Mike and 30 is the output. Now, if you have worked with pandas, you know how you can access columns of a pandas data frame. If not, don't be confused by that. It's just a simple uh, example here on the site. If you have a data frame, you can access a field of that data frame by saying df dot uh, column name here. Or you can say df and then you can use this dictionary type of uh, accessing where you just provide the column name in quotation marks like this. And this type of accessing allows for a pretty dynamic uh, way of accessing columns. So what I can do here in this case is I can say um, choice and then I can ask the user for input which column do you want to access and then they can enter a column name and I can just use choice here as a variable in the data uh, in the pandas data frame. And the same can be done of course for dictionaries if I have a dictionary um, with some key one and an, a value and then some key two and another value, what I can do is I can just say print. And if I have the choice, uh, the input choice from before, I can just say my dictionary and then the choice, the column name, or in this case, the key name that I want to access. Now for class attributes, it doesn't work like that. I cannot just go ahead and say print and then person uh, and then name or something like that. This doesn't work. This is an invalid syntax. We cannot subscript this, uh, which means that we have to do it differently if we want to dynamically access during runtime um, based on user input or based on certain conditions, uh, based on some input, uh, we, we can decide which attributes we want to access. So what we could do, of course, is something simple like if, like let's say I have again the choice, input, which attribute do you want to access? And then I can say if the choice equals name, then I can just print p dot name and elif if the choice is equal to h, I can just print p dot h. Or if I get something invalid, I can just return non existent, for example. Um, this is how I could do that, but it's pretty static because I always have to specify um, each attribute here in a separate elif branch or if branch, um, which is quite tedious. So what we can do instead is we can use a Python function, a core Python function called get attribute or get attr. Uh, so it's written like this, get attr. And what we pass to that function is three things, or we could also just pass two things because we have a default um, for the third parameter. And the first thing is the object that we want to access in our case, the P, the person. Uh, and the second thing is the attribute that we want to get from this object. So we could pass your string name. Uh, and the third value is a default value that we get here if this particular attribute here does not exist. So in our case, that would be non existent, right? So Instead of using name, though, we're going to use now choice, because choice is just a string, and it can be a name, it can be age, or it can be something else. And we're going to then print this output here. And when I enter name now, you can see I get Mike, when I enter H, you can see I get 30. And when I enter something else, you can see I get non existent, which is exactly what we would have accomplished with this, uh, if else type of structure. Now, the interesting thing here is this does not only work for getting attributes, it also works for setting attributes. So we can also go ahead and say choice, 
again, input which attribute do you want to change? And then value equals input. What do you want to change this to? And then we can just go ahead and say set attribute set attr p choice and value. And then when we go ahead and say print p name and print p h. Uh, let's just go with h here first. And then we're going to try to change the name from Mike to Steven. And you can see I got Steven as the name now. Now I'm not actually sure what happens when we try to add a new attribute. Let's see what happens there. If I say I don't know, height is going to be 100. Then I'm not sure if I can say p dot height, probably I can. So 10, oh, actually not 10, height here, and then 100. There you go, you can see we created a new attribute uh, for this object. Uh, which PyCharm, of course, doesn't recognize because it says there is no field, there is no reference height. Um, but of course, there is after we create it using this set attribute function dynamically during runtime. So the use case for this for those two functions here is doing something during runtime based on user input, because of course, if I already know what I'm going to have here, I can just go ahead and hard code it. But in this uh, way, I can read it from a file, I can read it from a database, I can respond to an API access, I can dynamically choose the attribute that I want to get or change. And then we have two more functions, which are quite self explanatory has attribute and delete attribute. So del attr. And of course, what has does is returns true or false, depending on uh, based on whether this attribute exists for the object or not. And this one just deletes the name. So if I do it like that, um, maybe let's go ahead and print this. If I go ahead and run this, and I don't know, let's go with height again 100. You can see I get true because name exists. Um, and then I get an exception down here because I'm trying to accessing name, uh, I'm trying to access name uh, but I deleted name before. So yeah, this is how you can work with attributes uh, of objects during runtime, you can set them, you can get them, you can check if they exist, you can delete them. And all of this can be done uh, based on input based on a file based on a database, based on a web request based on anything, you can do this dynamically during runtime. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And